What's up guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today we're opening up a pack of conflux This is not something that we get to open very often. So I'm very excited about it uh, I did not draft during this time, but I did open up a good many packs of conflux back in the day uh, So I'm hoping that I can at least give some insight into this set uh, Though I will say we will do the best we can to figure out what our first round draft pick would be if we were drafting this set so uh, our first card here is <laughs> Kaleidostone, uh, it's an artifact for two mana. Uh, when it, it comes into play, you do draw a card and then you can pay five, tap it, and sack it to add five colors, Wooburg, uh, to your mana pool. So this is a really interesting card. This was a very multicolor focused set, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so having access to multicolored mana is always great. I don't like a card like this, to be honest. Uh, it just doesn't seem very good. Uh, but it does draw you a card, so I mean, there's that. Uh, just not too exciting in my mind. <clears throat> Uh, Sidraxis Alchemist, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a black. When it comes into play, if you control a blue permanent, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Again, seeing that synergy with uh, multiple colors, if we've got a blue permanent, we get uh, a little bit of a buff off of this. Uh, for 3 mana, a 2-2 two, two is okay. Uh, for 3 mana, a 2-2 two, two that also bounces a non-land permanent is great. Uh, so I actually really like this. I don't know, uh, it's probably not first pickable by any means, but it's definitely a decent card. Uh, if you're in those colors. Uh, Beacon Behemoth is a 5-3 three for 3 and 2 green. You can pay 1 uh, and target creature with power 5 or greater gains vigilance until end of turn. Uh, this seems like an okay 5 drop. It doesn't seem amazing. Uh, being able to give something vigilance though is pretty powerful. It can give itself vigilance which is also pretty important. Uh, that being said it does only have 3 toughness so it's probably going to be blocked and killed pretty quickly. Uh, but it is still pretty good uh, being able to just get something in there, let them attack, but then also let them stay back on defense is pretty powerful. And you can do this as many times as you'd like for as many of these creatures as you have. Uh, and it because it only costs one mana, it's not a huge issue. So I like having the mana sink here. I think I do like this more than the alchemist. Uh, to be honest, just because this is kind of a bomb in its own right. Uh, and so for that reason, I'd probably take it over that. Uh, Darklit Gargoyle is a 1-2 uh, for 1 and a white. It does have flying, and then you can pay a black, and it gets plus 2, minus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, I actually kind of like this. Uh, it's just a really easy going flyer kind of a thing uh, that gives you a little bit of a mana sink. Obviously, you can really only use it once unless you uh, enchant it, do something like that. Uh, but it does seem pretty good to be able to get in there for a little extra damage. Uh, I don't necessarily like having early game mana sinks because a lot of that, that time is usually spent building your board and kind of progressing on that end. Uh, and so for that reason, it's probably not my favorite card. Uh, I think I'd still rather have the Behemoth. This also does put you into the, the situation where you're kind of pigeonholing just a bit. Again, this is a multicolor set, but uh, you this is a white card that needs black to actually activate its cost or activate its ability. And so you are kind of putting yourself in white black immediately. And I'd rather stay a little more open with the Behemoth. Uh, Unsummon is an instant for one blue return target creature to its owner's hand. This is a very classic card, uh, one that we've seen a lot of, and it's actually a really good, efficient uh, bounce spell. It's just a great tempo play. I really, really like cards like this. I tend to be a little bit more of a tempo player in draft, uh, and so I do like a card like this, honestly, more than Behemoth, though I do think Behemoth is a better pick, uh, and so for that reason, I'm going to stick with that. Uh, Armillary Sphere, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a two mana artifact you can pay to and sacrifice it. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand. You then shuffle your library. This is actually a pretty good card in this uh, set in particular. Being able to pull out those lands, it not really costing too much, and all you're sinking four mana into it, which is a bit slow, uh, but it isn't terrible. I kind of like something like this, to be honest. Uh, I still don't like it more than the Behemoth, I don't think, uh, but if you are already in a multicolor strategy, this is something that you'll probably want to pick up uh, just at some point in that draft. But again, it is a common. You're probably going to see more of them, uh, so I wouldn't worry about it early. Uh, Tukatung Thalid is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. Uh, when it's put into a graveyard from play, you put a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature token into play. I actually really like this as a 1-drop. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's very much, it's just, it leaves something behind, right? Like, that's pretty good. It's already going to be a 2 for 1, uh, which I really, really like, especially early. Uh, and it just leaves you an extra blocker if you need it, to be honest. This is a great chump blocker just because it leaves something else behind. Uh, so for that reason, I really like this. It's not going to impact the game too heavily, though. Uh, and so the Behemoth is definitely 
definitely a better pick in my mind, but it's definitely as a just one drop green creature, it's pretty solid. Uh, Asha's Favor is an enchant creature for two and a white. The enchanted creature has flying, first strike, and vigilance. This is actually a really interesting enchant creature. So for three mana, you're getting flying, first strike, and vigilance. That's pretty huge. Uh, normally, I don't like enchant creatures. As you guys know, it opens yourself up for that two for one that I really don't like. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Arena recently, and a lot of people have been doing the enchant creature thing, and it's good for like a turn until you destroy their creature, and then it's like, ah, I don't have anything left. Uh, but this is actually pretty solid, I would say. The payoff here seems like it's much more worth it. Uh, being able to get flying first strike and vigilance means it's evasive, it's very favored in combat, and it can still block. Uh, so all of those things considered, I kind of like this more than the behemoth, to be honest. Uh, and that's saying something because, again, I really don't like enchant creatures. Uh, Rupture Spire is a land. It comes into play tapped, uh, and when it does come into play, you have to sacrifice it unless you pay one of any color. But it does tap for one of any color to your mana pool. Uh, so... Pretty interesting card. I don't know if it's that key, uh, just because I I don't know how often you're going to end up in more than two or three colors. Uh, I feel like if you're in two colors, you really don't need this. If you're in three, maybe. Uh, any more than that, definitely. It's probably a worthwhile pickup, but I don't like taking this early. This is so dependent on what colors you're in. Uh, if you're only in one or two colors, it's probably not worth it. So keep that in mind. Uh, Vectus Agents is a 4-3 for 3, a blue and a black. Uh, you can pay a blue and a black and it gets minus 2, uh, minus 2, minus 0, excuse me, until end of turn and is also unblockable this turn. Uh, so this is a really interesting card. I actually used to have this card and loved the art a lot. I think it's really sweet. Uh, but I don't actually think it's that good. It's, uh, I mean, it's okay. It gets in for unblockable, which is fine, but... Uh, you do have to pay extra mana to do that, and it's still just a 4-3 uh, for 5. I think I'd rather have the favor, to be honest. So, uh, Paragon of Amisha is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a white. It does have first strike, and then you can pay Wooberg, and then until the end of the turn, uh, becomes an angel, gets plus 3, plus 3, and gains flying and lifelink. Obviously, that's a lot, but you are paying a lot into it, and you need all 5 colors. I tend not to like that. Uh, it is probably just a solid 3-drop anyway, though. A 2-2 with first strike is not bad. It's going to deal with a lot of stuff pretty easily. And then if you happen to get the Wooberg, I'm sure it's fine. I'd still rather have the, the favor here over this, uh, but it's not a bad card. Uh, Dreadwing is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. You can pay 1 blue and red, and it gets plus 3, plus 0, and gains flying until end of turn. This is a really interesting card. Uh, it's a good early play, I would feel like, and then if you're in those three colors, it's fantastic. Being able to swing in for four in the air, it's pretty good, uh, especially on turn three. So I do like that, but you are dedicating this to a early game only kind of a thing. Uh, it's probably going to die pretty easily, so I don't really like it for that reason. Uh, Scarlined Thrynax, uh, Scarland Thrynax, excuse me, is a 2-2 two -two for uh, Jund, black, red, and green. You sacrifice a creature and you can put a 1-1 one -one counter on the Thrynax. I actually really like this. Uh, so I love stuff like this where your opponent targets a creature uh, and then you can just sack it to this and then buff this creature. Obviously what that means is this now becomes a huge, huge target. Uh, but it does give you a little bit more flexibility with your creatures and how they're actually going to get destroyed. Generally speaking, this is going to be the one that they're going to focus on, which means you can worry about building up some of your other cards or in a situation where you know they don't have removal or their board presence is just really bad, this card really, really can win you the game. So I actually really like this. It is three color, but again, we're in a multicolor set, so I'm not worried about that so much. Uh, and then our rare is Font of Mythos. So it's a four mana artifact and at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional two cards. Uh, really interesting. I don't like a card like this in limited uh, solely because you're helping both of you. So it just doesn't seem all that good. Uh, if, you're can, if you can use it to your advantage, that's awesome. But if you can't, really just doesn't seem worth it. So for me, uh, I think it's the Thrynax. I think that's a pretty easy pick for me. Uh, again, I didn't play much during this time, so please correct me in the comment section if you feel like uh, this is just super wrong. It may very well be. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.